Way to start thinking about Torah as as Shira, Shira ta Torah, and Shira of, of Shemitah. Rav Avi, you mentioned that those words speak so much to the sense of Shemitah. Shira ta Aretz, Sos ta Sis Vitagel Akara. We're living <coughs> that fifth bracha which we recite under the Chupan, the Sheva Brachot, Sos Sos ta Sis Vitagel Akara, the barren land. The Tagel is rejoicing the kibbutz baneha letocha besimcha with the ingathering of the exiles and it's extraordinary. I remember when I was a very, very young man. I was not 18 years old. I was 17 years old studying in Yeshivat Karen Biyavna and we spent, I spent Chodesh Nisan in a kibbutz up north in Anatziv. And I still remember in Anatziv, Friday night, Kabbalat Shabbat, there was a man, he was davening and he was looking at his fingers. The whole time he was like praising God while he was looking at his fingers. And I asked about him and I was told that he was a brilliant physicist. He was a genius scientist. And I was very interested in understanding why he was doing what he was doing. And I approached him and I, I asked him and he said, you know, my background is in mathematics and physics and I had all kinds of opportunities to teach at universities. This goes back a long time, early sixties. But he said, I chose to work at Mata Aretz, the land of Israel. And when I say in Kabbalah Shabbat, Yismuchu HaShamayim V'tagel HaAretz Yiram Hayam Umloa, I look at my fingers and I thank God that my hands have been given the zuchut of working at Mata Aretz. That happened a long time ago, Yona, and I, I still remember it so clearly. Blessed are those who can work the land and show such beautiful respect to the land that it's a Shabbat La'aretz. It's a Shabbat for the earth. It's an earth. You can feel the singing, the, the joy of being at its Israel, being God's creation. Rav Cook takes that further. Uh, I, I just share with you something that I learned earlier today from you, uh, that, that Rav Cook uh, apparently wrote 
while he was walking. Yeah. And Rabbi Nachman, of course, speaks about this idea of Kol Makom Shani Holech, Shani Holech Le'Eretz Yisrael. I'm always focused toward Eretz Yisrael. And even those of us in, in Chutz La'aretz are, are farther away. We're thinking about Shemitah this year. Uh, we're sitting together right now. It's it's just before Yom Yerushalayim. Ravavi, you're going to be traveling to Eretz Yisrael, to Medinat Yisrael next week to be with your family. But it's Rat Hashem. Um, and uh, Rav Kook, Rav Kook, so much more to speak about. So much more to speak about. And when I, I look at Shemitah as an approach to all mitzvot, I see within it on the one level there's the external layer of understanding the halachot of what Shemitah is, the genius of Rav Rimon and his unbelievable unbelievable Sfarim but for me as well it's important to understand what is the holiness of the mitzvot to ask not only what is the halacha but what is the kedusha? what is the holiness, the the Kedusha, the Erchin, the values of each of the mitzvot. And when one looks carefully into the parsha of Shemitah in Vayikra, it's mentioned other times in the Torah, but that's a central time, it speaks about the land being fallow in the seventh year so that it be a Shabbat Lashem, it be a Shabbat to the Lord. We're given the mandate covenantly to partner with God to make this world a better world. And part of that is is working the land. But the human being could become so successful to forget that at its foundation, the land was created by God. And whatever is produced from the land, while it does come from human input, and this is at God's will, God wants us to use our hands like that saintly man who looked at his hands, this genius, and spoke about the schut of being able to work the land. But it's to recognize that that it's God above who is who has given everything to us. And it's something like Shabbat. We work for six days on Shabbat. We rest on its basic level. Because God rested, we rest. But on a deeper level, it's to indicate that whatever our creativity, the ultimate creativity comes from God. Whatever we've been able to, to produce, it's with, with God's help. And we need that. We need a Shabbat Bashem. We need to be reminded, and that's what the seventh year is all about. It's sort of a coming to the crescendo of each of the seven days of Shabbat. And after six years, into the seventh year, it's Shabbat Lashem. Mm-hmm. My Abba, of blessed memory, just a thought and memory of his holy soul, his holy, holy being, he would tell the story about how in a town there was great havoc. The town was under attack, and then there were certain climatic climate issues that they were facing and so they decided the leadership that they would gather everyone together in Bet Knesset and they'd have a program and somebody would read um, um, would read Le David Hashem Le David uh, Hashem Ori Le David What's the Lord is my shepherd Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd. Thank you. And it's my age, Yona. And, um, but they decided, since they had an elderly rabbi, that they'd bring in an actor. And he would read it with great diction. And, <laughs> um, so, but then out of respect for the rabbi, the elderly rabbi, they said, well, we'll let you read the same thing after he's through. So the actor comes in, there's a big crowd, and he reads it. You know, Le David Hashem, not Le David Hashem, Ms. Mar. Le David. No, no, what is, what is it? It's, um, the Lord is my shepherd. Hashem Roi Lo Echzar. Hashem Roi Lo Okay, so the actor reads it. 
it's absolutely still, and when he's through, standing ovation. Everybody stands up, gives him an ovation. Then the rabbi gets up, and he starts reading it, and with all of the <laughs> experience of his life, and as he's reading it, the people are mesmerized. And deep, deep tears coming from them. And when he's through, no one budges. There's a silence, not an empty silence, but a silence which is just suffused and pregnant with meaning. The rabbi had really touched the souls of everyone there, even without the standing ovation. So that night they went to the actor's hotel and they said, you know, we gave you wonderful remuneration and you read very well, you got a standing ovation. But the truth is the rabbi, he, he didn't do so bad himself. He didn't. He took it to another level. Yeah. So my Abba tells the story that the actor said, you know, there's a difference between us. You told me to read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my uh, Hashem Rui. The Lord is my shepherd. I memorized it and I read it. I knew Psalm 23 very well. But this rabbi, he knows the shepherd. <laughs> Shabbat Lashem. Shabbat Lashem. It's um, it's like Pasuk, it's in uh Perekted Zain of Tilim. Tovati Bal Alecha. Whatever good I do, Bal Alecha, I couldn't do it without you. It's uh it's good for human beings to be in partnership with God, but to make sure that we it doesn't go to our head to remain humble and to recognize it all comes from God. I see that in the other pieces of Shemitah as well. There's the Shemitah of the land, there's the Shemitah of Ksafim as yes. well, which also speaks to that, you know what? Just because you have something doesn't mean it's totally yours. Take a break from it. Take a step back. Uh, we just learned that Ravari Hart did this amazing thing in, in Skokie. He spoke to the Rashmin Tabe Midrash a few months ago um, and mentioned at the time that he was working on this, that we were able to, they were able to forgive uh, close to $2 million in medical debt uh, for people in the community, just people who, who otherwise would be behind on, on payments and had this, this ol, this yoke mm -hmm. on them that they were able to help out with, it, really in the spirit of modern Shemitah. Yeah, you mentioned that, that there's another expression in Perakhafe that the Shemitah, that that year should be a Shabbat Lashem, there's also an expression, it should be um, a Shabbat La'aretz. Mm -hmm. Earth also has feelings. It has feelings. The earth needs to rest. It's a, it's a powerful, powerful environmental message. It's actually a message of Shabbat. In the writings of Eric Fromm, Eric Fromm, he asks, he wonders, is there any deeper understanding of the prohibition of, of work. I'm, I don't believe he was an observant Jew, but, but he writes about this. And then he says, well, the idea of work in nature on Shabbat has something to do with making sure that our relationship with the land is in perfect equilibrium, it's perfect pace, peace. So don't pluck an apple from a tree. Don't cut a blade of grass. Just on that day, let the land rest. Let there be an absolute level of, of shlimut and shalom between the human being and the earth. Even the earth sings. <laughs> it sings. Remember when our eldest granddaughter, Ariella, when she was a little girl, now she's a farm bee, she's a mother, and Baruch Hashem, she's done so well. But I remember when she was a very little girl, I was walking through the streets, I was the rabbi then of the Bayit, now thank God Rabbi Stephen is there, taking us to a new level. And I was saying Shabbat Shalom to everyone. And this little innocent girl, she runs up to the tree, a tree, and she hugs the tree, and she says to the tree, Good Shabbos tree. Shabbat Lachem. Shabbat Laharetz. The earth, the earth needs some rest. We, we receive nourishment from the earth. Even the earth needs, needs a year just to 
re-energize. It needs that time. And by the way, I'd add, there's a third Shabbat. There's a Shabbat Lashem, mm -hmm. there's a Shabbat La'aretz, and then there's a Shabbat Lachem. Maybe this is another world. It's, Go ahead. That's what sabbatical year is all about. Mm -hmm. it, it's again related to Shabbat on some level. Shemitah is like an expansive Shabbat. Shabbat, we say, God finished his work on the seventh day. Really? God didn't finish his work on the seventh day. That would imply that he worked on the seventh day. So in the Septuagint, when they translated it to, to make sure that the Torah would not be understood, they actually translated that God finished his work on the sixth day. But in our Torah, it says God finished his work on the seventh day. How come? And Rashi touches on this. God did work on Shabbat. Rabbi Norman Lamb says, the, the object, the object of the, the subject of working is the same, mm -hmm. but the object, what we're working on is different. Right. During the week, we work on the outer world. On Shabbat, we're working, we're working on, on the inner world. We're not, we're working on our, on our inner selves and we're asking ourselves, well, what's the purpose? Like Rabbi Soloveitchik writes, Adam one asks, how can I control the world? With what can I control the world? Mm -hmm. Adam two asks, why? For what purpose? It's a day of inner contemplation. says Rashi, Ba Shabbat, Ba Menucha, Kaltavinik Miraham Lacha. It was work. It was hard work. It was inner work. Abram Heschel, in his magnificent work, The Sabbath, he writes, for six days, we work on having more. On Shabbat, we work on being more. Mm. For to have more, he says, is not to be more. And in a similar vein, maybe we need that sabbatical year. I know it's a way out idea. How many people, except people in scholarship, maybe some rabbis, I, I was a rabbi for 50 years, I never took a <laughs> sabbatical. But looking back, I'm sorry I didn't. I think it's a good idea. Every seventh year, do you know why the land lies still? So that we can come into ourselves and we can ask ourselves the deeper questions of, of why? What is it all about? Why am I in this race, in this humdrum, in this humdrum of life? It's a beautiful, really, tripod of the sabbatical year of Shemitah, of Shabbat Lashem. It's a time to look at our hands that are able to work God's world. The Lord is my shepherd, Hashem Roi Lo Elsa. And it's a time of not only Shabbat Lashem, but it's Shabbat Lad, it's the earth. If we put our ears to the earth, we can hear it sing, the environment. If we're not going to take care of the environment, then I'm not a progressive crazy, but if we're not going to take care of the earth, there's going to be no other issue for us to take care of because there'll be no world. We have to take care of it. In Bereshit Perek Aleph, in that story of creation, God says to Adam, to Chava, Pru Urivu, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, the Kibshua, and subdue it, conquer it. In the second story, when Noah comes out of the ark, God says, Pru Urvu Where's the Kibshua? It's not there. The second time around, God wanted to make sure we got it. <laughs> we should not be conquering the earth. But as it says in the Ganadin story, Perik Bet Pasuk Tetvav, take the earth le'avda, to serve the earth, Ule Shamra, Shabbat Lashem, Shabbat La'aretz, Shabbat Lachem. Where they tell the story about, uh, um, I think it was about Rib Levi Yitzhak Badichev, and he saw a person running. He's running. He says, Vu 
Where are you running? He says, I'm running to make a living. So Rabbi Yitzhak said to him, Und von wann in Westia? How do you know that your Parnas is over there? Maybe it's over here. <laughs> we need that time of reflection and introspection. I want to go to that, that word of reflection. To me, the productivity of, of the six days is really crystallized by by Shabbat. And if we take the, the productivity then of the seven year the six years, it's the same thing. Shemitah, stopping, not working. Okay. Let's take a step back. Let's think about what we've done. Then that's why we get to all of these mystical ideas of number eight being Lamala Min Hateva. Because now that I've done all of this creative work, material creative work during the first six, and now I've got the seventh when I've reflected what I'm able to accomplish in the number one of the new cycle, the Sunday, or the first year of the new Shemitah cycle, or uh, as it were, the, which is really number eight, I'm able to now think in a different kind of way what, what I'm going to do in this next cycle as we go forward. You know, there are seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. And then it's do. Again, right. it's do, around. but what is that eighth note? There's mm -hmm. no eighth note. Right. It's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's no H. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, to. That's the next octave. That's the next octave. And what you said really resonates deeply, as you said it, within my neshama, because the idea of Shemitah is that it should not remain in Sila, but we should take the ideas of Shemitah into the next cycle, into apply. the first year, and apply it on a higher level. It's the next octave, it's the, it's the Shemini, it's even seven is the physical and mystical numbers and, and and uh, six was the physical, seven is the spiritual, eight is even oh, taking yeah. it, taking it to the, you know, when you look at Shabbat, again, there's a very strong relationship between Shemitah and Shabbat. The truth is we end Shabbat the way we start Shabbat. We end Shabbat saying a tefillah over wine, Abdallah. We begin Shabbat with Kiddush. We end Shabbat singing about Elio Hanavi. And we start Shabbat with Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Asheri. We end Shabbat with the Samim, the spices. We begin Shabbat, when you walk into a Shabbat table, you can take in the beautiful spices of the, of the Shabbat table. Candles. We, candles. We end Shabbat. How do we end Shabbat? With candles. That's how we start Shabbat. You know, in my parents' home, they never blew out the candles of Abdullah. It remained on the table. So I ask, how is it that we end Shabbat the way we started Shabbat? It's really the same. And perhaps one could suggest we end Shabbat the way we started Shabbat, because the truth is we're trying to start Shabbat again. <laughs> we're trying to take Shabbat into the week, into the week. In my parents' home, they had two separate candles. They didn't have uh, the braided stick. When they came to Bore Marejo Eish, they put it together. They never blew it out. Mm -hmm. And they would leave the candles on the table. Mm -hmm. And the table would be set for what's called the Malava Malka, escorting the Shabbat out. Mm -hmm. There were people who walked into our home and they said, I thought Shabbat started last <laughs> night. It looked as if they were starting Shabbat again. And that's the concept, I think, of one is impacted, the glow of Shabbat remains, the idea is to take it into the week, the idea of Shemitah, of recognition that we're all in God's hands, the holiness of the earth, of introspection, that it should not be limited only to Shemitah, but it should permeate. It keeps on going permeate the seven years when we're working as well. And the truth is, I think we even see that with the, I mean, with the last mitzvot in the Torah, but it's really the mitzvah at the end of the Shemitah year, which is already at the beginning of year number eight or one, the, the dough, however you see it, yes. which is hakel, yes. right? Hakel is, a, it, it's this moment when we all come together as a nation, hakel ha'anashim, ha'anashim, v'hatav, v'kerchav, v'sharecha, every single part of the Jewish community 
joins together. We reenact Matan Torah in Yerushalayim. So going back to our Rav Kook, Eretz Yisrael, kind of focus for a moment within that. And then we say, okay, we're, we're, we're going back into the land again, right? We're restarting this thing. And the Torah that we've, okay, we've reflected, we've taken, we've had time to learn maybe during Shemitah in a way that we haven't during the other six years. Now we're going to take that. We're going to reenact Matan Torah. The revelation takes place. And now we go forward. Now we take that Torah with us into these next six years as we take the candles, the light of Shemitah, right? And we move forward. Yeah, and Shemitah yeah. really speak to the message of of bringing everyone together in a united in a united way because the land is is open to everyone. Mm-hmm. It really is an expression of of for six years you become involved in your private enterprise, but on the seventh year with all the intricate halachot here and there, but at its foundation, the land is open to everyone. It's a very great uniting force. As a matter of fact, when we think about how, going back to this parallelism between Shabbat and Shemitah, Mm -hmm. yes, we end Shabbat the way we started Shabbat, because in a a certain sense, we're bringing Shabbat into the week. There's one slight difference. By Halakha, we start Shabbat with the candles that are separate. Mm -hmm. By the end of Shabbat, when we say the blessing over the fire, Borei Mereo Eish, it's braided into into weaving of the wicks. Because the hope is that Shabbat is a day when we learn about the unity of souls, of Shabbat, Friday night, in mystical literature, when husband and wife come together in love, that's the highest expression of the unity of God. And by the end of Shabbat, what do we say? Ata echad, v'shimcha echad. It's this dream of the future, of ata echad, v'shimcha echad. And when we say ata echad, v'shimcha echad, or in Shemitah, it's, it's if you will, uh, a fuller expression of that achdut, that's not a hope for uniformity. It's a hope for unity. Mm. Uniformity is we're going to agree by eradicating the opinion of the other. Unity means despite our differences, we're listening to each other. What are we at Chovevei? I remember when uh, we, when Dr. Michelle Belfer Friedman, she started the program of teaching leadership and pastoral psychology. It was very expensive. It was a six number figure for the first year. I said, Michelle, what are we teaching? She said, well, the first year, I said, give me the bottom line. Said, well, the first year we teach our students how to listen. I said, listen, that's costing $100,000. And then she told me, it's not so simple to listen. Right, Michelle always talks that when we're counseling, our rabbis, our great rabbis, that we should see in front of us the word wait. W-A-I-T, which stands for Why Am I Talking? Achdut, you know, in rabbinical schools, rabbis are trained to speak. You should spend much more time how to listen. Achdut doesn't mean, achdut doesn't mean that I've come and brought you over to my opinion. Achdut is Brad Hirschville wrote, Rabbi Brad Hirschville, because I'm right doesn't mean you're wrong. Oh, don't we need that? We need that kind of unity. We need it in Eretz Yisrael. Everybody has an opinion in Israel. Take it from somebody who had, in my younger and middle years, I had very strong opinions, and I was unable to listen to the other side. I still consider myself a humble activist. Some would say not as good an activist, because it's best for activists not to listen to the other side. Hmm. I don't agree. So as an example, in Israel, we're talking about the land of Israel. The right has to understand that it has no monopoly on loving Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel. Rav Yehuda Amital, Moriva Rabbi, who was ready to give away land for peace, he loved Eretz Yisrael as much as I did. I was a not one inch neck. He loved it as much, but he had a different approach to how to reach Shalom. And by the way, the Hevra on the left, they should understand they have no monopoly on wanting peace. 
everybody wants peace just as much. There's a disagreement on how you reach that point. And uh, it's important in to, to actually, when we think about, when we think about Shemitah, which has an aspect of, of moments when we're united, aspects when we remain individuals, to think how it relates to our personal lives. Mm -hmm when we interact with others on a religious plane, on a political plane, on an emotional plane. In America, things today are so binary. They're so antagonistic. And in Eretz Yisrael, I think the Prime Minister is right that I think the Tzav HaShah today that's most important is a sense of, don't compromise on your, on your positions but being able to listen to an, the other, not impugning the motives of the other. So Shemitah, which in its narrowness is intricate halacha, which must be studied very carefully, it has a much, much broader dimension. And on that note, a little bit of sostasis, but you have the last word, I'll have the last niggin. Please, Yonavan. I'll just say that uh thinking a lot about that idea of why am I talking so why why am I talking right now but really why are we why am I resting where not just wait but what w-a-i-r why am I resting why am I shmita ing to make shmita into a verb and I think this idea that that you're talking about of the ability for us to take a moment or a year a shabbat la shem la aretz and lanu lachem right to take a step back to think for ourselves how does this time change us how does this period of time affect who we are? Not just on the surface and not just, okay, now I'm rested. I can go back to work. But how am I different as I emerge from I the it. cocoon of Shemitah? And I, 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 I wish us all a bracha as we conclude this amazing Shemitah Beit Midrash series uh, that we've learned so much from, from various Torah teachers uh, and learned different aspects of this amazing, amazing year of Shemitah that we are changed uh, as a result and that we see ourselves as people who are able to go back to what you just said about both Israel and the United States, places where there is a sense of polarization. Uh, a wise person recently said to, uh, we had our Israeli rabbis visiting from Israel, the Rikmah rabbis and Rabbi Niyot, and they, someone said to us, it's your job to go back to Israel and to be bridges. Take your communities and be bridges. Listen to people on all sides and find the way. And uh, Rabbi Nachman, the bridge can be very narrow, but it may be the most important part of the entire geography. Because if you have two massive, massive continents that aren't connected to each other, right? What's, what's connected? It's that bridge, that thing that's in the middle that's very narrow. And maybe Shemitah, maybe Shemitah, maybe Rav Cook's ideas of, of Shabbat Haaretz can bring us a little closer to that reality right. and bring ourselves really to being that right. bridge to the world. And I love what you said. I know yeah. you have the last word, but... but <laughs> you have the last word. You know, when you said that yeah. Shemitah, maybe it's not just a noun, maybe it's a verb. Yeah. It helps us become mm -hmm. halacha. Yeah. Yeah. Shemitah is part of halacha. Right. Halacha is a verb. It's love not it. a noun. And... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah.
Israel and Medinat Israel would be at peace. Bezrat Hashem, Yom Yerushalayim is coming up, and Tzvagan Al Israel should be safe. Our eldest grandson is back in Miluin in a very, very tough spot. And I also want to say a prayer for Ukraine. You know, the wheat has not come out of Ukraine, and it's the breadbasket of the world. And and our thoughts, our hopes, and prayers are with the people of Ukraine and of course with our beloved Medinat Israel and the Shnat Hashmitah, may the land of Israel and the people of Israel be strong, be strong again. Bezrat Hashem, Chazak, Chazak, Venit Chazik. Amen, Amen. Ravi, thank you so much. Tada, my great pleasure.